Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be going over my standard Ezel deck profile. So we got Gold Paladin back with DBT 11, Clash of Heroes, and I'm just gonna be kind of showing you what I've been playing around with for the deck. So Gold Paladin has kind of been my expertise for these last, God, how long has it been? But I'm gonna be showing you what I personally am playing with. But before we get into that, I'm gonna be giving you the quick little spiel about our sponsor today, which is 50 Cards. Before we get into that, I'm gonna quickly talk about our sponsor, which is 50 Cards. If you haven't heard this spiel already, uh, 50 Cards is an online store where you can pick up Vanguard bundles, play sets, singles, deck boxes, sleeves, everything you need. The bundles are really helpful because you can just pick up full play sets of every single card you need for the specific nation you play or kind of focused on. And that way you get everything you need going forward, not having to worry about the secondary market and with really, really competitive pricing for those bundles as well, making it the best option, I think, in my personal opinion, to update your deck. And not only that, but you can also get 5% off when you use code Nexus as well. And without further ado, let's just jump right into the deck profile. All right, everybody, jumping right into the deck profile, we got our ride line, which is our classic Ezel Ride, Kirf to Gareth to Bowman to Blonde Ezel. So basically we're sticking with this because you know you gotta get the, the order off Gareth when you ride Bowman. And then Bowman's gonna require Gareth and Kirf in the soul to do the superior ride so that you can immediately ride into Ezel from your ride deck. So for sure, very standard. This is what you're gonna go with um, for the Ezel lineup. I don't think there's really anything else you'd rather do just because being able to get off to grade three um, early and also being able to activate your Persona Ride as soon as it starts to your actual grade three turn is pretty cool. So um, I do like that. And what's also nice about Ezel's skill is that it does have a beginning of ride phase skill. So at the following turn, you can still kind of start building a board and getting that turn kind of accelerating. So going into the main deck, starting off with our normal units, we got our three copies of Blonde Ezel. So this is just for Persona Ride. What Blonde Ezel does is when it attacks, you can look at top seven, call two units, um, and Ezel itself will get 10K. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it does have the ability that you can only ride Ezel, uh, units with Ezel in its name. So that way you're not abusing the Persona Ride or abusing you know, the accelerated superior ride from the ride deck. Um, but the whole deck is gonna revolve around having an Ezel Vanguard anyway, so it all works out. And the next up for grade three normal units, we are running Sages. So Sages is just really good because it helps feel the soul and being able to look at the top of your deck is still always really helpful. It also gets 10K when your opponent drive uh, damage checks a damage trigger and it gets 10 shield when your opponent reveals a trigger during the drive check. So extra shield, extra power. It's just a really good universal unit. And I think that's why Sages is just going for so much right now, but it's still such a helpful card for this deck. And I, I do really think Ezel needs Sages just for the deck to kind of make up for, you know, the lack of power that it seems to be having. So that's it for the normal unit grade threes. Moving on to the grade twos. Starting off, this is the triple R that we're running. We're running four copies of T-Fault. So what this does is when it's placed on a rear guard circle, not by a unit's ability, so not by Ezel's skill, you can soul blast and it soul blast one if you played a normal order this turn you can look at the top five choose a card at the same grade or less than your vanguard call it and shuffle your deck so it helps you fill a board the second skill is also really nice which is when it attacks a grade three or greater unit if you have four or more units this gets 10k so it's a 20k beat stick right off the bat and the fact that you can you can call it from the deck, not get the ability to make a board, but at least you still get another 20K beater just for being on the board when you have a full field, which is really cool. So I do like this card. We do run a fair amount of normal orders, so it make, works out. And also Gareth searches out your normal order just from the get-go. So you, if you have this in your hand ready to go, it's live. You can work with it immediately. So that's why I like this card for, the, for those reasons. And next up for normal unit grade twos. I am running three more copies of Bowman, so we got our full play set. Um, the grade two lineup for these Ezel decks is always varies. I decided to run the Bowmans just because I do like the extra 5K. I do feel like one of the main things this deck suffers with is an issue about power. So 
that extra five can come in handy, um, but for the most part, I do think being able to recycle cards and have it go back into your deck is nice. So Bowman at the end of its battle that it attacked, it gets 5K and it goes back to the bottom of the deck. So what's also really cool is you combo this off with Dindrain, use, it gets the 5K, but use Dindrain's skill first. So either way, you're able to proc off Dindrain and keep the 5K, which is nice. And lastly, uh, I am running one copy of Turn R, just because counter charge is a little bit of an issue with the deck. We do have Dindrain, which helps to counter charge, but you know, I feel like you kind of go through so much of it throughout the deck and you know, you just want to make sure you have access to Ezel's skill. So being able to have this on the board, just to guarantee that you can, you know, counter charge is nice. So Turner is if you, at the end of the battle that this attack while well, it was boosted, if you have three or more face down cards in your damage zone, you can move this soul to counter charge one. So it's a nice little one of, it does help. You can search it out from the deck, throw it down when you need it. So, you know, it's been working for me. But that's pretty much it for the grade two normal units. Now we're just gonna go into our grade ones, starting off with our four Dindrain. So the new Dindrain, what it does is when it's placed, if you have a Vanguard with one clan, you can Soul Blast two to counter charge one. So our clan is Gold Paladin. At the end of the belt that is boosted, if you have a Vanguard as on its name, you can put the boosted unit to the bottom of the deck and you can stand this unit. So it lets you get another boost when you call more units with Ezel, which is really cool. So Dindrain is really great, very much needed in this deck just to kind of make up for the, the power. And it's a, just a really fun booster. And I'm running three copies of the new Silverfang Witch. Silverfang is just kind of there for, you know, like I said earlier, it's more power. So when it's called, uh, if you have a grade three or greater Vanguard with Gold Paladin, it gets 5K. And then if you want to, you can choose to counter blast one and draw a card, which is nice. So that's what I was saying, kind of going into the whole counter blast issue of the deck is that if you do end up like continuously using Ezel skill, then Silver Fang, you're using two counter blasts per turn. So if you kind of get a little too greedy with the counter blast, you can find yourselves running out and then you're not really able to use Ezel skill. Or if you want to use Sages' skill for you know, the the extra power matching, you know, that that's another way you can end up using Counter Blast a lot too. So, uh, but I toned it down to three just because I feel like I, I'd rather have space for other units, um, but it's still overall a good card just for a filling hand. And then we got three copies of RPGs. I'm doing the Age of Smear Dragon. Uh, this is the one where if you have one or less cards in hand, you do not have to discard for the PG cost. And uh, we got our Elementaria coming up, so that's why we got the three PGs there. All right, so now we're moving on to trigger units. Uh, we're running Spiritual King of Ignition Valnut. Uh, I chose Valnut as my OT just because you do go through this deck really fast and I don't want to deck out, but I also don't feel like I need the blue OT just because I don't think the crit is very, like, Super important for the deck. I do think it since this is more of a multi-attack focused deck being able to Throw this down and put it on a rear guard that you just called out from the deck Just for an extra attack is gonna be kind of more of the spicy play in my opinion But being able to recycle cards can be helpful in this deck So if you do want to run the blue OT, I can see the reason for that But for the sake of this video, I'm running Valnut is my OT for crits I got my Blade Feather Dragons uh, just because we do call from the deck, so it doesn't hurt to have a trigger with a skill that can still be usable. So if I do have to call a card, at least I'm calling a trigger with a skill. Four more vanilla crits because crits win games. We're running three fronts. Uh, this is Alpac, the one that gets 5k when your opponent's at grade three. Uh, 5k shield, that is. Draw triggers will deck you out in my opinion, but it's something that I'm still playing around with. So. If you play with this deck fast enough and you've got enough pieces, the draw triggers could potentially be really good as well. I just know like for the long game, I feel like the draw triggers could lead you to a potential deck out. So that's something to keep in mind. Plus you're calling a new front row every turn with Ezel. So I feel like the front triggers still have some viability there. And three heal triggers, or sorry, four heal triggers, uh, just the vanilla ones. Um, I'm kind of indifferent about the ones that gain shield if your opponent gained an artificial crit or if they have a unit that restands maybe after set 13 when everyone starts playing dry jeweled i'll start putting in the uh the sorceress the you know one that gets 15 shield when your opponent gains a crit by a card ability so but for now sticking with the vanillas 
So that is it for the triggers. And now we're just gonna go into the normal orders or our order cards in general. We're doing three copies of Reign Supreme, King of Beasts. So Gareth searches this out when you ride Bowman on top of it. What it does is if you have an, a, van, a Vanguard with Ezlo in its name, if you look at the top seven cards of your deck, choose a grade three or less, call it, and you give that unit 5K. So we do like, you know how we're running the grade two, what's her name? Teeth Fault. So since we're running Teeth Fault, you know, this technically still works because you look at top seven, call a card. This card is called from this card effect. Since this was not called by a unit's effect, it was called by an order's effect, it still goes off. So that's also something that I really like about this order card is that, you know, top seven, oh, there's Teeth Fault. Call it, get it off. Soul Blast one, call another unit. So I do like that little combo and also, it still helps to fill the board for free. So it's kind of like deck thinning, which I do like. So I'm, I'm happy with the, the three copies of King of Beasts. Then we are running one copy of Gratis Gred Dale, just because uh, Persona Ride is pretty cool. Um, it is an order card, so it helps activate Teeth Fault and you know, 10K early while you know, you've been riding to grade three super fast and your front row is getting 10k for all those extra attacks that you're going to be calling extra units with Ezel's skill. So getting off your Persona Ride is really helpful. And then I'm running one, Wisdom of Beginning, the cleared, Wisdom of Beginning that cleared the world. That's a mouthful. This, what it does is you can play it for Counter Blast 1, and then you draw two cards, call up to two cards with grade less than or equal to your Vanguard, and if you don't, you have to discard two cards. So it's like, you have to discard the cards that you don't call. So it's just like, you're gonna call cards anyways. So it's kind of to help you build a board and search for targets in your hand. And also it's an order card. So this also helps proc off Teeth Fault skill. So I do like it, but it does cost a Counter Blast. So again, like I said, just keeping in mind about how you're using your Counter Blast, but this is still just a really good card to kind of help you get some pieces early game and Honestly, if you have to call triggers, call triggers just because Dindrain's gonna put them back in the deck anyways, so don't worry about it too much. But I do like having it access to these order cards. And lastly, our Blitz order, which is uh, Elementaria Sanctitude, which is like our fourth PG. Um, every standard deck is pretty much gonna be running this unless you're running grade fours. So it's a PG that goes to the order zone instead of the guard circle, so it gets around guard restrict. And if your opponent's Vanguard has triple drive, so like grade four normal units or G units are all gonna have triple drive. So this will be free the minute you place into the Blitz, uh, into the order zone. So really, really good card. I, uh, every standard deck should honestly have one of these just because as for the foreseeable future, this is not really going anywhere. So we're gonna run one. And that is it for the standard Ezel deck profile. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any concerns <laughs> or comments of you know certain ideas that you wanna see for this deck or how you wanna build this deck, I'm still playing around with it a lot. So I definitely wanna look at your comments and get some feedback on my deck. And uh, yeah, if you wanna see some games with this also, uh, just let me know and we'll try to make it work. But that's pretty much it. Before we go, just a quick reminder, please be sure to check out 50 cards and their online store just for making it easier to update your deck. Buy singles, buy sleeves, buy deck boxes, buy mats. You know, you can pick up those bundles just for the upcoming splits for set 13, or if you're playing Shadowverse, you can pick up your splits for set three. Uh, it's just a really great opportunity to upgrade your deck. All right, and that'll do it for today. I'm Richard and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.